All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Getting Started on Quantopian for Students. Today's webinar is presented by Dr. Tom Stark in conjunction with the Finance Club at IIT Rorke. Dr. Tom Stark is the CEO of AAA Quants, a consultancy firm for algorithmic trading and AI. Tom was the head of the quantitative trading team at Genesis, one of Australia's largest proprietary trading firms. He has a PhD in physics and works as a principal engineer at Rolls-Royce and held a senior research position at Oxford University. As a quick note, this webinar is being recorded and will be reposted on this channel in a couple of days, so you will be able to rewatch it. For the question and answer portion of this webinar, which comes at the very end, we are going to be picking questions from the live chat next to the YouTube video. So if you have a question for Tom, you can post it in the chat and we'll try and answer as many of your questions as possible. You can also post your questions in the Quantopian forum to get answers from other members of the community who spend time on the platform. With that, let's get started. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for the introduction as well. Uh, can you hear me well? Um, sorry, um, I haven't heard anything. Are you able to hear me? Uh, yeah, everyone's able to hear you. Okay, wonderful. Um, so I, 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 can't, I cannot see the feedback here, that's why I'm asking. So, um, hello everyone. Um, I'm really uh, happy and pleased uh, again to speak to everyone uh, over in India. Um, as some of you might know, I was there last year and ran um, a whole lot of Quantopian workshops. Uh, over uh, in different cities, in, in Mumbai, in Delhi, in Pune, and in Bangalore. And it was really wonderful uh, experience to be there. So um, this time I'm back over the internet and I really hope uh, I can give you an enjoyable webinar uh, this evening here in Sydney. Um, so um, let me just uh, get started uh, with my experience with Quantopian. Um, when uh, I actually started on my quant journey, uh, this was probably about 10, 11 years ago, there was really not many resources around. And at that time, uh, Quantopian uh, just got started and I was really an early adopter. And at the time it was really uh, the only platform that provided uh, resources where you could actually learn to become a quantitative analyst or, or, or anyway quantitative trader and at the time of course it was still a little bit rough around the edges and I have to say over those years that I have been with Quantopian and I've been working with it it's become better and better and um, it's really going from strength to strength and they're adding new features and I, I really uh, have to say it's it's a wonderful tool and I'm still using it in my company for many times uh, for various um, for various types of work and it's been a fantastic resource and so what I would like to do uh, with you today is give you an introduction in all the uh, resources that you have in Quantopian and what it can do because there's quite a lot to the platform and if there is a little bit of time um, I will also show you uh, just really, really simply uh, what you can do with it and how you maybe uh, set up your own uh, trades and tests. Um, we have an hour today, so there is quite a lot to do and to cram into. So um, we will see how far we can get uh, in this one hour. Uh, and I really hope uh, you can take a lot from it. So let's get started. Um, and this, on this page, what we see here, this is basically the page when you open Quantopian and you log in, uh, this is what you see. It's the Quantopian Community Forum. Um, this is a fantastic tool uh, to find lots and lots of good ideas uh, about quantitative uh, strategies, um, trading ideas, and so on. But before I come to this forum, um, I want to really start at the beginning and show you how you can go and get your journey started uh, with Quantopian. And of course, Quantopian is not just a, a backtesting platform, it's so much more. And sometimes when you get started, it can be a little bit overwhelming um, 
to have all these features and possibilities. So what I will do today is I show you, if I was new to this, how I would approach uh, uh, this, especially if you have probably got a quantitative background, you probably know some programming, maybe you haven't really been in quantitative trading yet, then um, this is the one for you. And um, we'll see how we go through this and learn as much as we can about the platform. Okay, um, so let's get started um, with uh, a few things uh, that are really good. So at the top here, you see there's different um, buttons. And so let's go to the learn button first. And um, probably uh, the first thing you, you should look at is the getting started page, of course, um, if you haven't done this. So this gives you a small introduction into Quantopian. Um, but uh, even, even before we do this, um, let's go uh, to the tutorials because here we have some really interesting things. So of course, um, we've just seen this getting started uh, is probably the easiest way uh, to just get your hands dirty and, and actually write some code straight away on Quantopian. There's also a few other things. Uh, there's this thing here called pipeline. Now, for those of you who are just getting started, uh, you probably don't want to start with this. Pipeline is a um, data streaming service where you can access huge amounts of data on the Quantopian platform really easily. And uh, this is something uh, that you probably want to get in a little bit further down the track. Then um, we've got Alpha Lens. Uh, Alpha Lens is effectively a tool that is really, really important in quantitative trading. And what it does is it helps you to evaluate so-called factors. Um, they're basically uh, numerical uh, analysis tools where you can uh, check whether your trading strategy makes sense and, and do some initial research uh, for your trading strategies. And then um, writing a contest algorithm, it's something I will also talk about later, how to um, enter your own algorithm into the Quantopian contest and potentially uh, win some money as well. So let's just quickly go to getting started um, and have a look at that. Um, so it talks to you about um, what is the trading algorithm? Uh, where do I start? So um, basically, one of the best ways to start is uh, with a Quantopian uh, notebook. And most of you will probably know some Python and they, you will have heard of the Jupyter Notebooks. So a lot of the Quantopian research is actually done in Jupyter Notebooks. And um, this getting started code here will really give you a good idea about how to uh, get started uh, with those uh, Jupyter Notebooks and the things you can do with them. And um, it's actually a really, really incredibly powerful tool. Um, why is that so? Well, for those of you who haven't actually uh, so far got into quant trading, one of the most difficult and problematic um, things in quant trading is to get access to good data. Good data are, first of all, very hard to get. And secondly, they're usually very, very expensive. So if anyone has ever tried to get good data uh, with a certain granularity, maybe minutes or hours or days, uh, you will find that in order to get your hands on those good data, you probably have to pay a lot of money. Now, what's amazing in the Quantopian environment is that Quantopian does provide those data for you. Um, all the data that you need um, are actually accessible in Quantopian. And what's really amazing is not only um, that um, back until uh, last year, it, it used to provide uh, pretty much any equity uh, and future that you can access in the United States. But now Quantopian has actually expanded to different other countries as well, including India. And um, we will have a look at this a little bit later. We will have a look what data is actually available. But without data, you can't do any quantitative analysis. And the fact that you can access this large amounts of data uh, through Quantopian for free is, is really, truly amazing. And probably the first question that will enthuse, 
uh, pop into some of the minds of you who have done this before uh, will be, um, can you download and access those data through Quantopian? Well, unfortunately you cannot because um, Quantopian obviously has um, deals with those data supplying companies and um, you will, you know, um, you know, if you, if you could download them, you would have to pay a lot of money. But quite frankly, uh, in my own practice, in my own company, we use Quantopian a lot for data analysis. And we never really had the need to download any data from Quantopian. Um, we can generally really um, just use the research environment. And that is actually more than sufficient for our needs to do good quantitative analysis. Uh, in within the Quantopian framework. And so when you do this, you will notice that that actually there is pretty much anything there that, that you will ever need and, and Quantopian provides it. So um, of course, in the uh, introduction, there's, there's a few um, things that we see here. Um, introduction, we have already there is data exploration, um, pipeline API, which is what I said, it's the, um, tool to download large amounts of data and manage them in your environment. Um, so that's a little bit different from just getting simple market data as it is shown on the first page. Then uh, how to analyze a strategy. Um, so everything in quantitative trading revolves around trading strategies and analyzing and, and testing strategies is actually very difficult. It's not straightforward and it needs a lot of practice and work. Um, then uh, there's an API for your trading algorithms. Um, again, there's a, a data pipeline, um, a whole tutorial on how construct how construct portfolios. Um, so most people start with, um, when they build a trading strategy, they start with just trading a single asset, but um, real quantitative trading actually uh, really revolves around um, trading not just one asset, but usually big portfolios of assets uh, for various reasons that we don't have time to get into today. But uh, you will learn a lot about portfolio construction in the Quantopian environment. And then finally, um, we uh, learn about backtesting. And backtesting is really the ultimate step um, in uh, quantitative trading before you go live with your strategy. So. Once you have done all your research, uh, you've done all your due diligence, then you put your algorithm to the test in a back tester. And if it still performs well in that back tester, um, you may want to consider going live uh, with your algorithm. But of course, um, until you get to this point, it's a very, very long journey. And the really nice thing is Quantopian will really help you every step of the way. Um, in this process and you can actually go for a long way to to get started and then ultimately take your algorithms uh, to live trading. So let's go back to learning. So we have actually been to getting started and the tutorials. Now my favorite thing I would say if you ask me um, what is Quantopian really good for? It's it's two things. It's It's the data that Quantopian provides which is absolutely amazing. And the other thing is the lectures. So let's go to the lectures. What we see here is um, a whole lot of amazing lectures. Um, and we can see here there is at the, at the current time, there's 56 lectures on quantitative trading. And I have to say this, this is, if you go through all of this, you really will have a, an amazing understanding of all the elements, well, not all the elements, but a lot of the elements in quantitative trading. So these lectures are really fantastically uh, well set up. Um, they they have they cover a lot a lot of interesting topics, and if you really uh, go through the effort to go through every lecture, you will realize that um, you will actually really know something about quantitative trading a lot more than uh, perhaps uh, what uh, than what you used to before you start this journey. So what happens is with these lectures, they actually start from uh, really, really basic stuff, uh, introduction to research, there's an introduction to Python, just in case you haven't really um, used Python before. Now, um, if you haven't used Python before, 
I also strongly encourage you to learn a bit of Python before you actually really get into Quantopian. Um, so this introduction covers quite a bit, but there's probably a few more things that you might want to work through before you get into this. And then of course, NumPy. NumPy is a um, tool that helps you do a lot of um, matrix and, and vector processing. And then finally, Pandas. Pandas is uh, something that is pretty much uh, the gold standard in quantitative finance at the moment. And basically what it does, is it produces uh, time series, uh, usually with timestamps that you can manipulate and, and do all sorts of things with it. And it's an incredibly powerful tool in quantitative finance. And you can probably ask any quantitative analyst almost on the planet, and they will all know what Pandas is. So if you haven't heard of Pandas yet, um, and you want to get into quanti quantitative analysis, this is what you really want to use. All right, so a few more basic topics. How do you plot data? Actually, it seems like a straightforward thing. How do I plot data? But um, in reality, uh, when you become a quant, you will realize that to effectively communicate with people that are not quants can be very, very difficult. And doing good plots and, and writing good documentation is, is absolutely essential. And I've seen it many times that you have very, very smart quantitative analysts that sometimes get fired because they just simply are not able to communicate effectively. So if you want to become a quant, not just uh, work on your hard skills like, like um, statistics, maths, and programming, but actually learn your soft skills as well. So really develop your ability to communicate effectively and actually often in simple words uh, put the point across about what you're trying to say uh, with your analysis with your data and so on and so plotting is definitely a big part of that and um, um, really really important and then um, from plotting we go to a whole lot of statistical analysis tools Again, they're quite basic, um, starts with means and variance and statistical moments, linear correlation, that's all pretty straightforward stuff, and linear regression, and then it becomes a little bit more um, involved. Uh, we got maximum likelihood, uh, regression model instability, so just looking how unstable regression models can be. And then here, more, more on regression models. Regression, by the way, is a really, really important tool in quantitative finance. Um, often, a lot of you probably um, have done quite a bit of machine learning as well. Now, um, interestingly, you know, um, I actually gave a lot of talks as, uh, about this also in India. People think, oh, you know, uh, I get into finance, apply machine learning, and I make a lot of money um, like just applying deep learning. Well, unfortunately, it's not that simple. Um, and, you know, uh, believe me, I've, I've explored that area a lot. And uh, by far the most used uh, machine learning model is still a very simple linear regression. I would say in 90% of the cases, linear regression still dominates quantitative finance. Uh, this is not because it's simple and, and this is what people know, but simply because uh, finance is still uh, linear models are still very important in finance and anything that isn't linear often uh, tends to overfit and then uh, you're not uh, getting very good uh, results from it. So um, don't underestimate the power of linear models, they're still very big. Um, if you are into quantitative trading and personally, um, if I see models that are based on deep learning, I'm always 100% suspicious and I have to admit, I haven't really seen very good uh, deep learning uh, trading models yet. So if you have one, um, please let me know. And um, I want to know what, what you're doing there because uh, uh, there is really not that much around in this area. OK, so um, then we are really getting more into uh, the trading. Um, from from our linear models and uh, this is this is a very important lecture the dangers of overfitting um i briefly mentioned it before overfitting is a really big deal in quantitative finance um it's very very easy to build trading models that overfit and they look really beautiful um, um 
And then as soon as you let them into the market, they just simply don't work anymore. And uh, some of those um, some of those lectures are really dedicated to overfitting. Um, so they give you a really good understanding of it. And that's, that's phenomenally important uh, in quantitative finance. Uh, here you see this P hacking as well. Uh, it's a lot to do with overfitting. Um, and you gotta be really careful uh, with a lot of these things. Um, after a few more um, of those um, of those notebooks, um, we come to uh, introduction to volume, slippage, and liquidity. Now, um, this is this is something that sometimes uh, people really get stuck on. Um, so they build these beautiful quantitative trading models, and they look like you know you buy at a certain price, you sell at a certain price. But actually, the markets are a little bit more complicated than that. Um, sometimes there's just simply not enough buyers or sellers in the market. And so what that means is there's just not enough volume. And we have to be really careful when we build our trading models to see whether a certain instrument has enough volume or not. The same is true with slippage. So we think we get a certain price for our instrument, maybe because this is the price that our data series gives us. But actually, in reality, often when we uh, submit an order, uh, the price will just be slightly worse um, than what we think we will get. And this is called slippage. And so uh, often in trading models, even if you have a small amount of slippage that can really destroy your trading strategy and you're not actually making as much money as you think you would. And finally, there is this idea of liquidity, uh, which is really uh, related to volume. So if there's not enough people buying or selling, then even though there is a certain price, if we can't get enough uh, volume or liquidity, then, then we cannot actually really um, execute our trading strategy in the way we would like. And then we probably get a worse price and then um, we're actually losing money. So um, just to show you a little bit what this looks like, I click on this and we go. Um, and so what it does is it gives you a short introduction here. And then um, it gives you a little overview of what the notebook looks like. You can see this here. So it's a Jupyter notebook. There's a lot of um, a lot of writing explaining uh, what this is all about. It gives you a lot of um, gives you a lot of detail in and then graphs. Um, and so each of these notebooks you can really uh, learn a lot from. And then you see this button here, clone notebook. Uh, basically, what this means is you can actually clone this into your own repository of notebooks, which we will look at in a minute. And you can actually just, just take the notebook and then modify it in the way you would like it to be. And you can just change whatever, change the instruments, change the tests, and so on. And basically, make the whole thing your own, which is really fantastic. So let me go back. Uh, just to the lectures, you you can see I spend a bit of time with the lectures because I really feel that there is um, there is a lot of value. There is, in fact, a remarkable value that you get for free. In fact, if if you if if I had to charge people for this, it would cost a lot of money to actually um, to actually give all these provide all these lectures for people because because they're just really so 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 good. Um, and then. Um, from, from those uh, trading related things, uh, slippage and liquidity, we then move on to um, what we're actually trading. And because usually when we run a trading strategy, we have to select the instruments that we want to trade. And this is what we call the universe. And here we talk about universe selection. And then um, a few more basics, really getting into the um, fundamentals of, of economics, capital ethic, uh, capital asset pricing model and arbitrage pricing theory. That there's some really basic things uh, in econometrics that, that everyone uh, should know uh, when you get into quantitative trading. You really need to be aware of these things because even if you never use those models, um, you will see that lots of other uh, credible traders will talk about them. And you obviously don't want to appear like you don't understand uh, what they're talking about. So. It's really important, um, all, those, uh, all those lectures. So please get into them. And so um, we move on a little bit further. There's this portfolio analysis. Here we 
actually building portfolios of assets and analyze uh, how they work. And then here we can see principal component analysis. So this is when we actually start getting a little bit into more uh, machine learning topics. Again, our principal component analysis is classified as machine learning, but it's still actually a linear model. So this is really important. You will actually not see a lot of uh, non-linear machine learning models in quantitative finance uh, up to this point, um, simply because they are very difficult uh, to get to work. All right. Um, and then um, as we move on, there's going to be more and more advanced topics. Um, and then, you know, you can see there's another machine learning tool called Kalman filters, for example. Um, there's different trading strategy types, as you can see here, introduction to pairs trading. Pairs trading is probably one of the best known uh, trading strategies. And often before you start trading big portfolios, you should really learn about pairs trading because it gives you an introduction uh, to trading a pair of two assets. And from there on, you can just generalize this uh, to trade more than two assets. Um, and as I said, there's this Kalman filters. And then finally, uh, we come to um, futures. So as I said before, on the Quantopian platform, we not only have equities or stocks, but also um, we get a lot, I think around 120, currently about 120 uh, futures contracts. And futures are different asset classes. And um, I personally, I'm, I'm a big fan of futures and I like uh, trading them. So um, it's really helpful if you want to um, step a little bit away from just trading equities. Um, futures is uh, probably the next level up in complexity. They're a derivative and probably the next level in complexity then would be options trading. Um, but that is already uh, quite complex. Uh, however, Quantopian is really good with futures. And I really highly encourage you to also check this out. And then finally, you've also got some interesting uh, um, um, lectures on ETFs, exchange traded funds, uh, which is just another asset class as well. All right, so this was um, a short introduction into the lectures. Um, if, it were, if I was new to this topic, uh, I would highly recommend just start from the beginning and go through all the lectures. You will learn a lot of quantitative finance. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so um, from, uh, from the lectures, uh, we basically covered uh, the learn section uh, of Quantopian, which is getting started tutorials and lectures. And once you have this, you probably already have a very, very good idea of um, what uh, you want to do. Now, um, the next thing I want to go to is research. And probably the most powerful um, thing here are the research notebooks. And Basically, when you look at the lectures, they actually based or they are actually research notebooks. So when we have a lecture here, as I said, uh, we go clone notebook. What I want to show you right now is um, just quickly how to uh, do how to run a notebook. And um, so let me just bring this up. Uh, it's still still loading. Um, I apologize, sometimes here in Australia, uh, the internet is sometimes not as fast as, as you would hope. So once you uh, clicked on this, you see a big blue button and you can start a new notebook. And when you do this, it will basically bring up a Jupyter notebook. Now this Jupyter notebook is basically running in the Quantopian environment. So it's not something that, um, it's not something that you can actually download straight onto your computer, but to be honest, you never have to. So let's just really, really quickly, um, let me show you something um, that is, is so fantastic in Quantopian, and this is uh, to get market data. So the simplest way to do this is um, use to get pricing function, which is an inbuilt function into the notebooks. And let's just download uh, some data for the Apple stock. Um, and let's just uh, download it from um, 2001 to perhaps um, 2004. Let's just do a very historical um, 
download and then um, when we run this, um, it will just download uh, Apple for us. So um, this will take a moment. Uh -huh. uh, we got an error. Oh, so uh, actually 2001 is a little bit too early. So let's just do the 2010 till 2011. Um, sorry, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, it, actually, most of the data started 2002. So um, AAPL. So if we run this, uh, we can actually see that uh, we now get all the data for the Apple stock uh, from 2010 till 2011. And we've got the open, high, low, and close prices, the traded volume. And price is basically uh, the adjusted price uh, for Apple stock. Uh, what does this mean, adjusted? Um, actually, with equities, we sometimes have splits, stock splits, where um, in order to keep the price of the stock manageable, uh, the stock is actually split in half or, or sometimes in, into three parts. And then suddenly the price uh, drops uh, to one third and the volume increases. Uh, so if we want to do back tests and uh, we don't account for those splits uh, that sometimes can be uh, problematic and give us completely wrong results. So one of the really amazing things that Quantopian does, not only that it provides the data, but it curates the data as well, meaning it takes account of those uh, splits. And there's also other things like dividends and so on. Um, and all these need to be back adjusted in order to uh, get a really, really good um, back test going. So if we, if we don't account for dividends and splits, often our back tests will be plainly wrong and uh, we're gonna have a lot of problems. So Quantopian uh, 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 curates those, those data basically for us and we don't have to worry about this. And this, this is actually another amazing feature of Quantopian. So basically when we're in the notebook and we have now the Apple stock, we can um, do whatever we would, uh, we would like with those. Um, and basically we can build our um, trading strategies. So I just want to show you uh, one, one more thing um, here. So um, just uh, if we wanna know, for example, uh, what, the, um, what Apple looks like, we can just go Apple close price stock plot. And here we actually plot uh, the price of the Apple stock uh, from 2010 uh, till 2011. It's that simple. And as I said, um, market data are one of the most expensive and most difficult things to come by, especially good market data. And the fact that you have that all at the buttons click curated and, and collected is, is really wonderful. And then whatever you want to do with it, you can do here in this. Um, so for example, um, we could do something uh, like um, get the uh, moving average of our Apple stock. Moving averages are heavily used in quantitative finance. So let's just, uh, let's just do this. Uh, and let's just do a 200 day window of the moving average and plot this. So uh, because it's a 200 day average, of course, uh, it just only plots uh, the last few bits. Um, so let's just make it the 20 day moving average. And so you can see here, um, I have very, very easily just got the data and plotted the data and then uh, produced the moving average. And this is already something that uh, is very typical for um, a basic quantitative uh, uh, work that, that we quants do here and there looking at moving averages. Of course, that's not the only thing, there's a lot more, but that's a starting point. Okay, so this is uh, one part of the research environment. Another part is uh, what you see here, algorithms. And um, algorithms is basically where you can run your back tests. And what I did was I just produced a really, really simple demo for you here and um, so this is effectively a uh, back test, or again, um, I use uh, the Apple stock. Um, and this is, uh, uh, you see this here, SID24, if I hover over this, um, you can actually see it should come up. You see this here with AAPL. So this is actually Apple stock. Um, what you can do is you can actually um, 
when you do SID and then you do AAPL, it actually comes up with Apple and then you click that it comes up with 24 and you see this. And so um, there's obviously uh, a lot of complexity in this spec tester, but I want to show you the most basic thing, which is a function called handle data. And handle data gives you um, sequentially uh, minute by minute uh, price data uh, for whatever uh, stock uh, you want. So in this case, it's Apple. And so see what we can do here is um, we have some rules for our trade. So uh, basically, if the date uh, of the day changes from one day to the next, so if we come to the next day and and then I introduce this, this uh, line here, context of finished. So if, if our trade hasn't finished yet, well, basically it hasn't started yet, then we will order a position here. We will order 10, um, 10 uh, Apple stocks. Um, then we print, hey, we enter the trade. Um, and when the trade was entered, and then um, here basically, uh, uh, when our uh, PL, when the profit of our trade um, is above $1,000 um, and we're not finished yet, uh, then we basically order the reverse. So we say we order minus 10, which basically means we're closing uh, this position of 10 Apple stocks, also meaning we just exit the trade. And then we say finished equals one. And then we make sure we're not going to get into this uh, previous uh, if condition again. And so all we have done is effectively got into 10 Apple stocks, waited until we made a certain profit and then exited and that's our finish. And so um, we can basically say, okay, run full back test. Here we specify the dates that we want uh, for our back test, how much money uh, we want to actually trade. And then we can run this back test. Um, and so it takes a little moment uh, because it needs to set up the backtesting environment. And then you can see um, it runs through our dates and uh, basically gives us uh, our backtest results uh, with that blue line here. And so uh, my little strategy, well, it's not uh, doing too great at the beginning, but then you can see it does make a little bit of money here. And at some point, it will actually make then uh, more than one thousand dollars, and once it's done that, uh, it basically exits the trade and then stops. Um, so you can see here, it exited the trade at this point, and then just um, stops trading and doesn't do any more. And so once this is finished, um, we can actually then have a look at. Uh, how our strategy actually performed. So there's a few tabs here, one's called performance. Uh, and there's, there's certain things which I cannot really get into too much today. You can look at the sharp ratio, at the drawdown, um, and then specific types of returns, the volatility of our strategy and so on. So there's a whole lot of um, uh, ways to analyze your strategy. And that is actually a full day lecture in itself really how we analyze strategies. And I tell you, I, I worked in this now for more than a decade, and there is still new ways that I learn uh, to analyze a trading strategy. So there's a lot of learning. It will never stop. But again, uh, this backtesting and then, and then looking at what's happening here is a really, really good way to start. All right. So this is the backtesting environment. And there is one more thing we have here in research, which is called custom data sets, uh, which is, again, it's, it's really, really important and really interesting. Um, so uh, at the moment, um, so, so basically, if you know, sometimes there's data that you would like to use, but you cannot use uh, because they're not inside Quantopian. And what you can actually do is you can download those custom data sets into your Quantopian environment. And this is what I've done here. I've got, I just built like a test data set. And I can actually download this into uh, the Quantopian um, environment and use it. So if you have some market data or anything that you would like to use and uh, you want to use it inside the Quantopian environment, 
uh, this custom data set is for you. And it's really, really helpful sometimes uh, to do things. OK, so now we're up. Uh, now uh, let's move on uh, to the documentation of Quantopian. So there's quite a lot of uh, things that we've already talked about, lectures, tutorials. Um, there's a user's guide, of course, an API reference. Um, I encourage you to check this out yourself. One of the really interesting things is this data reference. Um, so this actually talks a lot about uh, what is available on Quantopian. And, um, you will see this there's really a, a pretty much unmatched amount of data available uh, for free. And you can see here um, all these exchanges, uh, all these countries, Austria, Australia, Belgium, Brazil, uh, Germany, uh, some really interesting ones, Colombia, Czech Republic, would you believe it? Um, of course, Germany, Japan, um, and of course, India as well. So if you're, um, um, if you're in India, we, um, and um, actually last year um, when, when I ran my Quantopian workshops in India, these data were not yet available. And I had to tell people, oh, please, please wait a few months and they will be available. Now they are available. And this is actually really amazing. Um, there's actually more. There's not just price data available. There's other things as well. There is... Um, there's estimates, there's, there's fundamental data. So there are company fundamentals like uh, earnings reports and so on. Um, there's estimates, there, there's, uh, I believe, sentiment data as well. Uh, you see this here, and uh, Centex news sentiment and so on. So there's a lot of data available for you to test. And, and it's, it's really fantastic because you can build almost any trading strategy under the planet with the data uh, that you have available there and the environment. So um, again, uh, I really encourage you to uh, make the most uh, use out of this, out of what's available here. So now that you know, um, uh, you have looked at the notebooks, at the back testers, but probably you haven't, and, and maybe you have already done the lectures, um, but then you haven't probably really started building your own strategies yet and you wonder well um, what can I do you know where, where could I start to actually have some ideas for my own strategies and uh, the best place to go to is uh, the forum and this is actually uh, what comes up when you click the opening page on Quantopian and so Quantopian at the moment has a community of I believe over a hundred thousand people so imagine there's 100,000 quants sitting there in the background, and a lot of them are actually posting in the community forums. And I have to say, from, from my own experience over the years, I got many, 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 many ideas for trading strategies uh, from the Quantopian forum. In my opinion, it's by far the best uh, forum on quantitative trading. Why? Because people actually um, often uh, post their um, their back tests and their uh, research environments in the forum. And you can actually directly look exactly what they're doing. And sometimes uh, people really post some fantastic ideas. And so um, this is really an amazing, amazing resource uh, to really get some, um, to get some fantastic trading ideas. Um, and you see this sometimes, you know, people view these, um, these posts 11,000 times, you can tell that's probably a post that's really interesting. So let's let's click on this. Um, so you can see here, someone um, posted something about exponentially weighted moving average and standard deviation in the pipeline. Um, and so basically uh, someone uh, posted an, an algorithm here. And when you click on this, you can actually see the whole source code of the algorithm that someone posted. So it's quite a quite a big algorithm. You can see this, and then people comment on the algorithm, so they can look at it. They can say, "Oh, maybe I like this. Maybe you should change that." There's an incredible amount of knowledge uh, available there. But not only uh, you see the algorithm, you actually see the performance of the algorithm. In this case, um, there is uh, not much to see here uh, right now. So the algorithm only makes zero point two percent. 
but perhaps it wasn't actually done for making money. Um, I'm not sure. I just randomly clicked on it. And finally, the other thing that is also in one click, you can see how well the algorithm performed, the risk metrics. Um, in this particular one, sharp minus uh, 9.16 isn't particularly good, but then it probably wasn't necessarily uh, developed to be a good uh, trading algorithm, but it was probably developed for some testing some um, of those strategy ideas. All right, so, so this is just a random post. Um, and as I said, there is a phenomenal amount of, of resource here and you can learn so, so, so much uh, from all these posts. There's literally thousands and thousands of posts. Um, I myself uh, have posted a lot in the early days. Unfortunately, um, my business these days doesn't allow me uh, to be as active in the community as I would like to be. Um, and I hope I will eventually find some time uh, to come back to it again. But uh, it's quite likely at some point, if you go through, you will probably stumble upon my old uh, one of my old posts as well at some point. Uh, and if you do, uh, maybe uh, just, just send me a message and say hello. <laughs> I, would, I would appreciate it. Um, so yes, please check this out. Uh, of course, you can write your own posts here. If you click new post, uh, you will see uh, that um, you, know, you can uh, post interesting uh, questions, interesting observations, almost anything that, that is interesting to, to the community. Okay, so um, you will see here, uh, is this um, $270,000 paid in royalty since August 2018? Um, what does this mean? Well, basically, Quantopian um, has an interesting thing, has basically a contest. So once you have an algorithm that you feel uh, is really good and you think you, uh, this algorithm could make quite a lot of money, um, you can submit it to the contest. Now, it's not quite as straightforward. Um, when you think your algorithm is good enough, it actually has to comply with some of the rules of the contest. And uh, I've actually shown you this before. In the documentation, uh, you will find that, um, um, so, sorry, in, 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 um, in Learn, uh, there's, uh, the tutorials there is the contact there's the context uh contest rules so uh you can see here um it basically tells you everything about uh you need to know about entering the contest and sometimes uh when you when you do really well in the contest uh you can actually uh, win uh, small amounts of money um but then sometimes depending on um where you are located uh the uh, prize money is not too bad. Uh, and you can see here at the moment, uh, some uh, people win $50, $45, um, down to $5 for the 10th place. Uh, you know, it's a little bit of money in your pocket and it's not bad. But uh, what's even better about uh, this contest is uh, Quantopian can obviously look at your performance. And, and I want to say this as well, Quantopian, uh, does not look at the algorithms uh, you produce. Um, so if you have an algorithm and you're worried about, oh, this is the algorithm that makes me uh, millions and millions of dollars, um, and you're worried that someone else will steal it, I can guarantee you Quantopian will not look at the algorithm that you have. Quantopian can, of course, look at the performance of your algorithm uh, if you uh, send it to the contest but they will definitely not look at what your algorithm does exactly. However, if your algorithm is actually good enough uh, that Quantopian gets interested, it will actually uh, then, um, it could actually then get funded. Uh, so meaning that uh, you will actually get uh, some amount of money um, and funding for your algorithm and it will then be uh, run live in the market. And at the moment, there's actually a, a, quite a, a significant amount of community members already um, and, uh, in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, contest. And some of them uh, have got some serious funding. And, and as it said here uh, in the forum, uh, since August 2018, uh, people have already been paid out um, 
$270,000 um, in, in money from the algorithms they submitted. So I can tell you it really pays um, to enter the contest. And um, the other thing I want to say is that, that uh, I remember uh, in, in one of the talks a uh, Quantopian member gave, they said that in order to be really, really successful uh, in, in the contest, uh, in, in, in writing really good algorithms, the people that are the most successful, they spend a lot of time in the research environment. Meaning they don't necessarily spend a lot of time backtesting, but they do a lot of research uh, and they spend a lot of time researching, analyzing strategies and um, really learning uh, and, and, and testing and, and fine tuning until they end up with some really, really uh, profitable uh, trading strategies. And, um, and this is really important. Now, um, I know that, that some of you will probably consider um, actually uh, perhaps uh, entering or, or working towards entering this contest, but uh, some other people uh, might actually consider also maybe starting a career as a quantitative analyst. Now, I myself have gone down this path and I have to say it wasn't always an easy one. Um, there's definitely challenges, but uh, one of the really amazing things uh, in, in, in quantitative finance is that it's such an interesting and uh, multidisciplinary um, task. Some of you probably know that, that I have a PhD in physics and I worked quite a bit of uh, time in, in engineering and, and research in physics. And, Actually, I got really fascinated by the financial markets at some point and to that extent that I decided um, to change my career from, finance, uh, from, from engineering uh, to finance. And I have to say, I never look back. I really, really enjoy uh, uh, quantitative finance. And probably some of you will um, perhaps go down that path and, and will probably enjoy it as well. Now, if you are really interested in going down that track, um, I can really highly recommend uh, an article that uh, was uh, written by a colleague and friend of mine, Andreas Klenov, and it's also an unquantopian, and it's called How to Become a Professional Quant Trader. And there's also a talk going along with that. So uh, if you are interested in going down that career path, I would really highly recommend uh, starting with this article. It contains a lot, a lot of really good quality content. And whatever Andrea says there, I really, really agree um, with him um, on a lot of the points that he made. So if, if you want to, if you're interested more into this, um, it's a really good starting point. So just to uh, reiterate um, a few things, if you want to, um, if you want to really learn about quantitative finance, and I highly encourage you to do this before you consider becoming a quant trader, um, go through uh, the uh, lectures in Quantopian. And once you really understand a lot of it and you have gone through a significant amount of lectures, start writing your own trading algorithms, start testing them. Don't feel shy to uh, get onto the contest. And once you feel like you really understand this, um, there's definitely um, um, a demand for people in, in the quantitative trading field. And um, you could certainly start considering um, a career in this. But as I said, it's not an easy career. You need a lot of knowledge because it's so multidisciplinary. But once you get in it, it can be highly, highly rewarding. OK, so uh, this is basically, uh, this, this ends my, my initial um, talk about uh, the Quantopian platform. Um, now, if any of you has some questions, I am more than happy to answer them. So um, please feel free to ask me some and Angelica, she will um, maybe pass them on to me. So um, probably stay on the line a little bit longer um, and I will answer some of the questions you might have. Uh, but for now already, uh, thanks very much for listening and attending this. And I hope uh, you, you found some interesting resources here. And I highly encourage you to have a go with Quantopian. Um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's definitely also a professional tool for me. And 
I really uh, think that Quantopian will all, always get better and better every time and, and will move on and become an even better tool than it already is. All right, thanks very much. And um, yeah, please ask some questions. Thank you, Tom. We do have a few questions already in the chat, which I can pass on to you. Sure. The first one is, does Quantopian have tick-by-tick -tick data of stocks as well, or only daily OHLC data? OK, so um, Quantopian ha uh, does not have tick-by-tick. -tick. Quantopian uh, for the US market has minute-by-minute uh, -minute data. And I believe for all the other countries, it's daily uh, OHLC data and fundamental data as well. So no tick data. Uh, you can also probably understand that um, tick data would require a phenomenal database. Um, I, I, can, I think every day in the US, uh, there's uh, several terabytes of tick data produced. So it would probably uh, asking uh, a bit too much uh, to actually provide this. But um, uh, nevertheless, uh, there's one minute data and they're actually really powerful. So you can do a lot uh, with this as well. Uh, next question. Yeah, the next question is yeah. on the Quantopian platform. Can we test our strategy only on the historical data or do we have access to the dynamic data from the market? Um, at the moment, um, you. Well, you can test the strategy on historical data, but um, if you enter the contest, uh, you can effectively uh, uh, run it uh, live as well. So um, that's a way of testing the strategy uh, in, the, in the dynamic market. All right, that looks like all the questions we have right now. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for doing the presentation, Tom. Um, if you have questions for Tom that you haven't, asked or answered haven't gotten answered yet um you can post them in the comments of a forum post which i'll create for this webinar or you can post them in the comments of this video and we'll try and get them answered um, in addition to this video we have a bunch of resources available on our site including the getting started tutorial which tom mentioned and lectures and videos which he also mentioned so um feel free to check those out if you haven't already. We also have the contest, which Tom talked about a little bit, which is a good tool for anyone who's interested in trying to get an allocation. Thank you, Tom, for a great webinar and have a good Thank day, you. everyone. Thank you. Bye.